Well, good evening, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick. Sorry for coming to you so late in the day. Um, had some blood work this morning, and it kind of laid me up a little bit. So coming to you um, a little bit later on than usual. But we are in Mark chapter 6, verse 35 today. If you'd like to turn there now and join me, we will begin our daily devotion. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. And so they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, He looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. Immediately, he made that his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out in the sea, and he was all alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. For they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, "'Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid.' And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astonished. For they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. All right, so two great miracles that we have here. Jesus feeding the 5,000, and then Jesus walking on the water. And you might ask, how are these things related? And the way they're related in that is that both of them, Jesus is showing his... Um, showing his supremacy over the natural elements of the earth, right? He can multiply food and he can walk on water, two things that you're not supposed to be able to do, and yet Jesus is able to do them because what he's trying to show everyone here is that he is God. Uh, Only God can do these things. Only God has um, command over bread and only God has command over water. And... um, you know, in the Old Testament, uh, only God could calm the seas, right? God was stronger than the sea monster Leviathan and all of these other things. And that's what he's doing here by walking on the water. And then with the bread, I mean, God made it rain bread from heaven in the Old Testament to feed the Israelites. And that's also what is is happening here, um, that he is, again, providing bread for people But it's interesting that in the account of the walking on the water, at the very end, the last thing that is said is that they did not understand about the loaves. Um, You know, they still did not understand about God providing bread, that this is what God did in the Old Testament, and that by Jesus doing this in the New Testament, he was showing them that he was God. So, but so much of what we see here in the New Testament, but people are constantly missing it. They're constantly just not putting two and two together and coming up with four. Um, So, uh, you know, we're going to continue to hear about things like this. And then, of course, when Jesus dies on the cross, you don't think he's God either, because how could that happen to God? But then the resurrection happens, and then now you, you can't dismiss it any further. So, Um, we're all leading up to this at the end when Jesus is crucified and raised from the dead and then the disciples, um, you know, receive a special measure of the spirit at Pentecost and they go out and then they tell the world, then they get it. So, all right, let's continue as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you 
and give you his peace. Amen. Okay, so today is Tuesday. That means Wednesday night is coming. Tomorrow night, we have our midweek Lenten services at 7. Please join us at 6 for the supper. Uh, choir practices tomorrow night, youth nights tomorrow night. So a um, lot of activities that are happening. And then uh, please do prepare to come and join us this coming Sunday as we have our all congregation meeting after the service, planning to go 20 or 30 minutes. Um, Bob is going to speak, Wes is going to speak, I'm going to speak. And we're just going to go over and outline um, you know, our current state of issues with the church, um, what we believe this is going to cost from some of the preliminary estimates that we've received, and then how you can help. And, you know, we're going to introduce some possibilities about what we're going to be doing for flooring and what's going to be in what room and painting and whatnot. So, um, like I said, 20 or 30 minutes, and uh, we'd love to have you come and stay. Um, obviously, Holy Shepherd is uh, your church, if you're a member there and you're watching this, and uh, we, we'd really love to have your, your participation as we as we seek to renovate the Lord's house in a, in a way that's worthy of his name, in a way that is worthy of it being the place where we worship and receive the sacrament and uh, from which our ministry occurs. So that's all the announcements I have now. Have a great evening, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow earlier time for our daily devotions.